around a circle. They have those, yeah, those circles here. NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. We on NASCAR. All right, we live now. We live, y'all ready? Yeah, we always ready. COVID vaccines. Let me let me get let me get through this turn where y'all can see my face at least. <laughs> 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 what up, what up, what up? Welcome to Good Vibes TV. That's right, GV TV season two, episode 35. It's me, your boy, uh, L. But you can yeah. call me whatever you want, as long as you put Mr. in front. Uh, once again, beside me, my man, DJ PRS1. Yeah. And the fourth anchor, the new, not new to the show, but now permanently on the show, Dr. Alicia Gayadin. Yeah. Welcome I got to the family. To a mug. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. There you go. So we was uh, to everybody who's tuned in or will be tuning in. We we've been spitballing the last ten to fifteen minutes about um, COVID shots. Get me COVID sure. shots, the vaccinations. Oh, and, uh, I should be getting mine soon. End of the week. The, the, the DJ PRS one is. You know the crazy thing is, man. I know you didn't had. STD, and I know you went and ran and got an STD shot, but you're taking your time with getting the COVID shot. I don't understand that shit. Wait, who's that? Who are we talking about? Me. You trying to say I got an STD? <laughs> you, you, what? You know, what I'm saying I'll you ain't, wait, you ain't wait for that. I don't. Re- yeah, I don't. I don't recall ever having an STD. Yeah, you ain't wait for that shot. You ran down the. <laughs> To the free <laughs> clinic and got that bad boy. I don't know what you want to STD. Stop yeah. that damage. No, nah, the only STD <laughs> I remember having was uh, shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> they had shit to do. That was it. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Go get it. But, uh, shot, man. I don't understand. Can you send me your shot? Can you just like send that like, oh, like right now? So hopefully Even before the weekend, driving, it might be good. Oh, hopefully before the weekend, I should be all stuck and ready to go. Oh. Get, it, get it. I encourage anyone to get it. I was speaking to my cut earlier, and she has never even had the flu shot, but she's she's getting her first shot on Friday. That's that. She's like, I just I'm not going to take a chance. She's like, I'm not taking a chance with this. She said the same thing that you said, Alicia. Dr. Fauci has got the shot. I want the shot. You know, let's get this. Let's 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 get back to some kind of normalcy. And no, yeah. that's right. And, and, and the, the, more, the, day, the, the, the thing is, the more people that the more people that gets this shot, the quicker we go back to normals. That's the whole thing. That's, that's the whole right. Thing. That's the whole thing. That's right. And because the more people are protected. Right. And, you know, people want schools to reopen. Unless, of course, you, you live in Florida. You know, schools are already reopened. So, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, people want schools to reopen. You want people to, people want to go back to work safely. People want to be able to meet up with their family and their friends. I haven't seen my family except on, I, I have to join a show to see my brother every week. Because, uh we haven't visited the last time we were actually together in person was 2019. And wow. so it is. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It is really, it's hard. And you don't want it to continue. <laughs> I can't even help it. This is, Regan is such a clown. <laughs> He's 
sitting there yeah, pointing to a hole in his shirt. No, it that is a Kanye sick. West version. You have problems. That, that man God. is sick. That man is sick. There you go. You have a hole ready for them to stick that needle in for you to get that. There you shot. go. Wear that shirt, Fed. <laughs> it's ready to go. It is oh, vaccine ready. Hey, I want to say a big, big shout out to Miss Pamela Forbes. Thanks for looking. Thanks for hollering, giving us a, a hey, holler. Hey, Pam. Miss Monica Gaither. Oh, hey, Monica. Says she wish she had time to tune in. Mo Mo hey, Monica has uh, has a show of her own. Oh, really? If anybody get it? Yeah, if, if you got, I can't look at the name of the show. Hopefully, she checks it in the group chat. She, she, she's she's really good. She's in, if you know Monica, her mouth is worse than mine. So. <laughs> You know, it's been a, been a good show, real good show. We got we got good old M Mikey McCoy is back on there, the cupcake man. Hey, the the the, the, the man that lures women with his cupcakes. Yeah. Cupcakes. So wait, is this the guy that makes your birthday cakes and stuff like that? Yeah. Do the cakes. Oh, the cakes I've never tasted. Yeah. Uh, Y'all can reach him up one eight hundred Mike McCoy. Cake man. <laughs> you get it done. Does yeah. he ship? Does he ship cakes? No, I don't think so. He, he would if you asked. Yeah, he probably would if you asked. Guy him. Is. Right. He would. If, if, if you paid a price, if yeah, he paid a little stuff. And he won't overcharge him neither. No, he He's probably walk around the door for free. Yeah. No, I didn't mean for free. But that no, nah, but that's the kind of guy he is. You don't mean for free, but that's the kind of guy he is. You like, yeah. he like he like that one cocaine dealer that that, that they get. Man, take the first cup of free. free. Testers, he's handing out testers. <laughs> right, he's handing out testers. And then when you're hooked, yeah. <laughs> then you, there then you, you go. Then, then you start feeding. It's like, look, man, um, I need this cupcake, yo. I need this cupcake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you ain't even yeah, got a. I, I lick the cupcake batter out the, the bowl. Just bring me the bowl. The, the man can the man can bake his ass off. That that yep. I how to play, he's he's a hell of a baker. <laughs> Gotta open up a cupcake shop. I'm gonna say another big shout out to Miss Betran. Miss Betran is on here again. Hey Tim, what's up? You on here. Between you, Mike McCoy, and and, and Shatasia, y'all keep this um Y'all keep our, our, our comments lit. I read some of these comments. Yeah. Sometimes I can't keep up with the right. comments, man. But y'all be keeping these comments okay. lit. Okay, AJ. Hey, if anybody case. wondering, I'm driving. Yeah, I'm driving. He, he, he's doing. He's doing Luber. It's not. It's Uber and Lyft yeah. together. He's doing Luber. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out here in these these city streets. In these streets. In these streets. In these streets, man. You know. <laughs> Counting the streets of Baltimore. Hey, wifey say you can't come home without um, you know, some dollars. Yeah, them dollars. What are you doing? It's the hole in my shirt. The hole? My finger can't. Yeah. <laughs> this is what oh, I've dealt with my whole life. All right. So, what, what's the topic? What's, let's get to the topic because we, right. we got to help this man. He's distracted. <laughs> So the topic we're discussing today is, um, uh, I guess, separated, divorced, or single parents, co-parenting, and visitation um, issues uh, during a pandemic. Oh. Hmm. I know nothing of this. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Bracket, do you fall in separated, single, divorced, co-parenting? Yeah, I think you fell in all of these brackets. Gosh. <laughs> uh, See, I, I, I had my chance. I had my chance of being a, a divorced, separated, single parent, but this was prior to the the the, the pandemic. Now with the pandemic, it, I think it's kind of difficult because um, you, you know you're dealing with now. Okay, I'm sending I'm, I'm sending my child over to you. Let me send my daughter over here, and um, um, baby mother is like, um, okay, I got him. Boom, 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 and then all of a sudden, I'm trying to get the kid back and. Like, well, who you been around? He what? Oh no, he got to get tested before he come back home. You know, so yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where these poor little kids probably getting stuff stick up their nose every. Like, man, I hate going to my father's house. I hate going to my mother's house. I, I, my why? Because I keep getting this goddamn Q-tip up my goddamn nose, man, every weekend. 
Yeah. It, it, it's it's tough got, for these it, kids, it, man. You know, but and, and it is, but at the same time, you look. I know my house, I, and, and the way I, I I carry things with my children are with me are totally different than when they're with their mother. Okay. Mm-hmm. For instance, my son's mother, right? They they went to Florida in this in, in like early August, right? So when they, when they came back. He called me, he's like, hey, daddy, can you come get me? I said, shit, you got the quarantine, son. <laughs> you got the quarantine. Now, mind you. Hey, his, I love you, brother, but you got quarantine. <laughs> his, his brother is with me. Right. So his brother was with me and didn't go to Florida. So I got I got half my kids. I got one. I got my son, the other son. The other son, nah, you got the quarantine, baby. You was down Florida. And, and he was kind of like on the phone, like, really? I'm like, you know, I'm I, hell yeah. Like. What the hell? And I'm trying to figure out why would your mother take you to the national hotspot to COVID Center? Central. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And in summertime, like I, it just blew my mind. So unfortunately, our children do pay the price because of you know the lack of thinking on on one parent's end. Right. You know. So you know it's sad, but I get it. You know. I'm, Johnny, you gotta get the test. I'm sorry. You wanted to go see your mommy, right? But you ain't gonna come kill me because you because your mom is ignorant, right? So I get it. I, I get it totally. And and to be honest with you, I think that's the that's the responsible thing to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the, it's the responsible. It's thing a to whole. Do. It adds a whole different dynamic and a whole different vibe to this 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 the co-parenting thing. It's crazy, man. It's 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 like oh my god. Um, it is. It, I mean, it's getting I, rough, I, it's, and especially for the kids. Yeah, it is. It is tough because, um, like our daughter, we we co-parent, and um, she sees uh her dad less because she is typically with me more, anyways. Right. Um, but you know, during the week. They always would go out. They would have like a couple date nights and stuff like that during the week um, because she's she's here with me. And then every other weekend she's uh, with her dad and we've maintained the every other weekend. But all of the, the date nights during the week has been cut off because we live in Florida. Not a little full stop. Right. I mean, where are you going? And you know, he's not coming here to have dinner. So there's nowhere for them to be right to go anywhere. And it's not safe. And, um, and and we had a COVID scare with her. Oh, wow. And it was, it was, it was very scary. Like I I was losing my mind. I could not sleep. And now was it because of one of these visitation visits? It was, it was, she actually went to her dad. And he um, called me and mm-hmm. said that he was not feeling well. Oh, wow. And my first instinct is COVID-19. Send my daughter. I'm like, home. what's wrong with you? What do you have? A headache, a chills. I'm like, listen, <laughs> you need a test. Absolutely. Right. So the first thing I did, I turned my car around and I went and got her and and got her and i was worried sick he um he ended up testing positive oh you did and oh, wow. i was it, it was really a horrible week because so did, did she have to get he, tested as well since she was around him for a couple minutes i had to take her and get her tested right. that in itself is very scary for right. a child right. it's one of those things yeah and okay. um and i test i got myself tested because when I picked her up at the time, we didn't know that he was going to test positive. And so I was around her. I was in the car with her um, and all of that. And so we, we all had to get tested. But um, thankfully, you know, we were okay. And I think after that, that's when we really decided this was definitely not something to play around with. Right. And um they they just have to figure out now different ways of interacting. So like they'll FaceTime and and 
you know, have their time together like that, but it has to be where we're all safe. Right. Until that, we can all be protected. So, you know, that, I work from I have a question safety. for you. I have a question for you. Yeah. Any any resentment? Not at all. Not from either side. Um, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just thankful. Him. I'm honestly very thankful that that her dad and I, we co-parent the way we, we do. Um, when we spoke about this during our divorce and stuff like that, it was, we put her first. So yeah. even our, you know, our, our custody arrangement is very much, it, it, it's, it's made in a way where it's, it's beneficial for her. And she is with me most of the time and it's just best that way because the last thing either of us wanted was for her to be flip-flopping from one house to the next how old is she she's now 11. say in two years she want to go live with her daddy you have a problem with that i will have a problem with that and that's not going to that's not going to happen oh Oh, why is that oh no that was getting good but why? He said now it's getting good. <laughs> well, one, that remember, was... Remember, keep keeping the child, the best interest of the child now. And that's exactly why I'm saying it. The best interest of the child. You're talking about a 13-year-old girl wanting to live with a dad who is hardly at home. Um, this, Where's the where's the support? Where where exactly do you have the parental supervision? Like where is that happening? And to be quite honest with you, um, knowing her dad, that would be a hard no. He would say no. Uh, yeah, he can't run his game. Come on. Now. <laughs> nah, that's see, see, see. It sounds like it's a definite no for you, and that you sound like you. you Oh, I can be persuasive. That's what it sounds. I can be persuasive. He'll say no. It doesn't sound like dad. It does You know, I think dad would probably say. I mean, who doesn't want their kid with them? You know, for for a period of time. You know, if, if one parent have a majority of the time, I know me. That was one of the things I struggled with. That going through all of it, somehow women feel as if though they know better, they do better, and they they go ahead and elect us for weekend parents you know we come weekend warriors or every other weekend or if you got them this weekend instead of next weekend you can get them pick them up wednesday and take them to mcdonald's do homework i just don't understand how that we fall on the wayside when i mean shit let's be honest now we're talking about 2021 right uh the men are better parents than these women out here if you want to be honest about it uh you got a lot if, me personally i've always felt this this way like when it comes to uh, taking care of the kid, right? Like my situation, thank God child support is over. But now that it's over and my, my sons have actually been living with me for two years, right? They, two years they've been living with me. I've been paying child support. I don't really care. It stopped now. And one of the things was, are you? do you want to take her downtown for child support? And I was like, hell no. I wouldn't have had children if I couldn't take care of them. If I wasn't willing to go out here, work two jobs or work overtime. Right. So and, and still manage to be home to provide for them, to to uh, be that that parental figure in the household and that mentor and all that good shit that, you know, they say we should be to, in order to be good parents. You know, but when it when it comes to like if we have to sit there and talk about who the kids going to be with, women just feel like, oh, no, they should go with me. Like, who the fuck? Hey, hey look. If the kid, hey, look, if you was really the parent to be with, why the fuck our relationship ain't work? You ain't good in some shit in life, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so the relationship failed. It ain't just all for me. How come you feel like the kid's going with me? Like, what the fuck, man? Why? <laughs> why? Well, well, first of all, now, if it's one thing I agree with, I agree a child should have two functioning parents. You know, a mom should not be a dad 
and a dad should not be a mom. You should have the mom, you should have the dad, um, by all means. Now, with regards to certain things of how a marriage worked or didn't work, and some people do some stupid ass things, <laughs> and that's the reason why a marriage did not work. Right. And it really sometimes does not just fall on both parties. There are some people that are just messed up enough to mess that shit up no matter what you do to save it. And so with that said, I'm not calling any names, but with that said, <laughs> when you sit now and you, you know, you go through the mediation and you set up that, that court order for that child, right. you know, the child support, whatever the case may be. A lot of the times, and let's just face it, a lot of the times the dad wants a lot of custody of the kids because the more custody they have, the less they pay. Damn right. They should <laughs> fuck that. The less they pay. And that's that's all well and good. But at the end of the day, what ha what it has to come down to is what is best for the child. Right. And in our case, it, it, it was best for her to be with me the majority of the time. Does that mean uh, he would possibly have to pay more? I guess. But it, that was not the, our driving factor with that, you know? So it, it came down to what was best for her, the stability that she would have. And that's the important thing. Being an educator, I go through this and I sit in conferences with attorneys, with parents, with fighting parents step parents, you know, daddy's hoe, mom's man, all this stuff. It's it's a it's a complete disaster when you have a child hopping from home to home. And that's just the bottom line. We grew up in the Caribbean where when divorce happened, you stayed with your mother. Am I right? Yeah, most of the time. We didn't know about people just back and forth. And the, and the dads were involved as much as they wanted to be involved. Like moms get you by default. Yes. Now, well, do I agree with that? You had to have a chance. You had to go to court. Do I agree oh, with really? that 100%? No, I don't. Right. I, I absolutely don't. Because being one of those parents, I believe my child should have time with her dad. But do I want her to just have time with him just to say, oh, well, it's the week. Let's split it. You have half. I have half. It's your time. Because there are some people that just go by the time. Right. It's, oh, it's, it's your time. Right. As if the child now becomes some kind of uh, parcel that you're just shuffling around. Oh, wait, hot potato. You got it now. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. No, now it's your turn. No. If you're going to spend the time with that child, it needs to be some quality time. Mm -hmm. So I can only speak for my situation. She's with me the majority of the time because, one, we're in school together. My schedule allows her to be with me all the time. Right. Her dad's schedule does not. He works a lot. I get that. I'm a great ex-wife. <laughs> I'm a pretty darn ass good ex-wife. Let me tell you, I'm very accommodating. I work things out. And all for the fact that I love my kid. That's just the bottom line. Because, and I know she loves her dad. Right. And so that is what's important to me. It, this has nothing to do with how I feel. Right. This you'll has be, to do with what's going to make her happy. What's putting a smile on her face. Right. And what's bringing her joy. And if I feel as if my child is going to go over to his place and sit there on an iPad or a computer and not have the attention that she needs, not have the help that she needs if she's working on an assignment because her dad's, you know, struggling, trying to do whatever he's doing, you know, if it's working on whatever... Aren't you assuming that, though? That I'm not. I'm not assuming because this was a discussion that we had. And this okay. is why I'm saying this right. is what was worked out 
with him and I. I didn't I didn't come up and be like, oh, judge, I need her all the time. No, I did not. <laughs> this was something that we both sat down and it was what was best for her. And I'll be honest with, with I, I would be very honest. I mean, this was my fir first divorce ever. I, you know, what, and, and to go through this type of, situation what i realized the courts really don't give a crap about you and this other person getting divorced they really don't nope they care about the kid though. they care about that child or yep. children that are that involved the that's the thickest part or file of that entire divorce proceeding as, it, sh as it should be as, as it, it should be, be. Yeah. and i i 100 agree and so i feel as if because those things were sorted out and emotions were put aside and we put her first, that things are the way it is and it works very harmoniously and I'm okay with that. Now, you, you, you win it. That's the, I mean, I, I know you okay with it. You're on the winning side. <laughs> yeah. I'm not on the win. There's no winning side. There's so how no does winning that, side. I, this I, is I, not what, a winning what, side. Because so how does won. that... What what is dad's opinion on 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 the whole agreement? Is is, is he good with the agreement as it is? Would he? I love he... how you two are sitting there going, well, "What's dad's opinion?" You're on the wrong <laughs> side. Like, All this yeah, stuff, yeah, y'all yeah, are yeah. acting as if someone sat him down with his hands tied up and his mouth gagged, and they were like, "Oh." Dr. Guiding, what would you like? Because then we're just going to put it in the paperwork here and stamp it. Well, Let me just tell you how it went down. In case you two forgot go, how these things go. work, let me just I, clarify it. Let me clarify it. When you it sit in yep. the divorce hearing and proceedings and you sit in mediation, you sit across from the person that you now about to get rid of, be free from, whatever, however you want to put it. Now, all of these things that are put into writing, you have the mediator, the lawyers, whoever, and they sit there and they go through line by line by line. It takes forever. You sit there and they go through line by line and it's every single thing about this child they decide right there. And the mother has a say, the father has a say. Then on top of that, we settled on that whole agreement after about maybe four hours. Right. And he had the final say. He had the final say because they gave him time to think. It over. They say, how about you go home and you think it, not me. Nobody gave me that option. No, no. no. no because, because it was that option is, is, is there is no option. When, you, when, when it comes to who the kid is going to go to in the courts, it's pretty much automatically mom. Dad right. has to walk, no, 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 has no, no, to no. walk on board. No, no. I'm going to stop you right there. You know Wrong state, you know buddy. You, you need to come down here and get a baby mama. You're going to be half responsible. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. In the of state of Florida, yeah. you could be a crack addict. You could be a drug dealer. You could be crazy as could be. You still have 50% custody of that child. This is the 50-50 state. It's, it's the law. So for us to have the actual agreement that we had, that's the reason why he was able to think it over because it was not the normal agreement. It wasn't like, oh, well, we're just going to give her to the mama because the mother is right. No, it doesn't happen that way in Florida. Yeah. Florida is really weird when it comes to visitation and stuff like that, because I had some issues with be co-parenting from Maryland to to Florida was was tough for me because I would never it was never easy getting my kid back. 
it, it, it was always like, um, and then I, I tried one time I brought the police and I got the police involved. I had to actually go to court to get my son back one time. But you did <laughs> Because of the state of Florida, right, and because, because of the, the state fact of Florida, that I had a paperwork, 50 state. I had to doc, the, 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 the signed agreement from a court and everything, and I presented and say, "Hey, this is the agreement," and the cop said, "My hands are tied. There's nothing I can do about it." What? <laughs> I'm telling you, I got a court order, but that don't apply. That's in Maryland. Are you let, 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 fucking crazy? Let, let, let me ask this. Let me ask this. Let me. So this is all going on in Florida now, uh, uh, Alicia. Let me ask you a question. So, doing y'all mitigation, y'all sitting there, y'all drawing up the paperwork, and y'all divorce was there, was like, you know, when I went through my divorce, real simple, the, the judge was like, is there a chance of y'all reconciling? Like, hell no. He didn't get into, you know, we didn't have law. He didn't get into, well, why are you divorcing? Was the reason y'all was divorcing on the table or it wasn't? So, again... Mm-hmm. In, in in the state of Florida, we're considered a no fault state. Mm. Oh shit! So again, anybody could be crazy. Mom could be crazy. Dad could be crazy. Your wife could be crazy. Your husband could be crazy. Whoever. It's a no fault state. It's a fifty fifty state. So you're getting divorced. Everything is fifty fifty. You are. Getting divorced, no one cares about why, who did what, how it happened. You're getting divorced. It's, you know, irreconcilable differences. Now, the information as to what you gave to your attorney will be in the paperwork. And that is presented to the person that you're going to divorce. So it will be in your paperwork only for you to have. But with okay. regards to what is just filed and what people would see, it's it's just a divorce. Like everyone's divorced for the same reason, basically. Damn, I got to come to Florida. <laughs> That's what I'm that, that is, I mean, outside of the whole COVID situation, Florida sounds like the place to, to fuck around and, and get married and cheat and divorce a motherfucker. It's a sunshine <laughs> state, shady state. I told you. Well, you sunshine know shady state. That's right. That is that is that, that is awful. That is that is all I got to say. That's that's got to be one of the worst things I've ever heard, man. And no fault. So if, yeah, it really has nothing to do. I think that's why it was called that. Miami Vice. <laughs> <laughs> but but so awful. many people they get divorced, and I'm sorry, there are some parents that should not be with a child fifty percent of the time. All parents. They're really wow, that, is, that is something I, I did not know that you educated me on that. But I will say this still: <laughs> if dad, if that baby in two years say she wants to go live with father, I don't think I think she should go live with father. If he's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not working. I got my shit I, together. Yeah, I, I just I'm not the, working. Then that in itself is a problem. No, I'm not working a whole lot. I, I, my baby can come stay, but I think women just. Women hate to let that go. It's like, I gave birth. Like, I got you pregnant. Who gives a shit? I mean, me casa, su casa. Tomato, tapata. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Like, women just feel like when they give birth to, it, to children, when we're in a relationship, it's like, oh, ain't that cute? Go go wake daddy up. Go go to daddy. Go to this, this, this. When y'all no longer together, it's like, why you always want to go to your father's house? My son's mother. Let me tell you how this <laughs> evil... Let me tell you how evil this woman is. Oh, like, shit. like I mean, I, I got a terrific story about this. This, this uh, individual. Sucky, sucky. She, you know, she. Uh, when we was together, before we had kids, she saw me with my daughter. Right. And she said she admired the way that I, the way that I was at the time and am now. But she was like, you know, you're just so good with your daughter. I just, I wanted to see what kind of man and father you were you know, with your daughter. I said, oh, okay, cool, whatever, you know, I'm glad I passed the test. So when <laughs> I was the same way with our sons, you know, nothing changed. I I love my children. I, I'm, just, I'm I'm a parent, ain't got to be about to, I'm a parent who, I'm just in love with my kids. I'm in love with my kids. I love my children. Right. So even though we're not together, you know, 
I, I, like the first few months, you know, I was just, hey, look, do you need me to do something? I can do this. They, they were with me. There was no problem. No problem. Right? As the children got older and because we're no longer together, you know, I've, I've always been a hard worker. So I had some things, you know, I had a place and, you know what I'm saying? I had shit there when my the children came over my house. It was like Disneyland. And when you go back <laughs> to mommy's house, it's like fucking prison. <laughs> so, you know, now you're talking about my kids asking their mother to come. They want to come see me when right. it's her, you know, when they with her. And she's like, no, you just left there. And they're like, so now it's like, do we got to leave when she come to get them? And she's like dragging them out the door. And they're like four get or five. Get your ass in the car. And, I'm, and I feel bad because I know if the shit was the other way. Yep. If I was going to get them and they were like, no, I don't want to leave. I want to stay with mommy. And she was like, Ramon, just let them stay. Just, just, just so we ain't got to go. And that's what I'm saying. That's the bullshit. Women play that fucking game, man. They believe that. They gave birth to the kid. They have uh, uh, ownership. They have what they call it squatters' rights. You know, mm-hmm. and it's, the shit is crazy, man. Like crazy shit. Like I just, I just never got that. And now, like all, all three of my children, my daughter and my sons. My daughter came to live with us the last four years. Uh, she turned and my sons have been with us for two years. You know, and it's all them years before that. It was like. Why you want to go see your father? Just really dogging the shit out of me, trying to t- t- told my sons I was going to go to fucking jail, that I was a criminal, and I'm out here in these streets and all kind of crazy shit, right? <laughs> now it's it's 2021. Okay, she she's cool with it. The boys are with me. She's in Georgia. She done found Christ again, right? She done, she done found Jesus, you know. And uh, so she called me on some old humble stuff and, you know, ain't even really talking about the boys. I know that's going to come up this summer. But come right. this summer. My thing is, my thing is this, that even though she's humble and she know they are with me, the conversations are always about her being in control of the children. Ramon, when did you, why didn't you call me when you found that out? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm calling you now. Doctor's appointments. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm calling you now. Oh, well, I think I should be involved. I'm telling you now. I'm involving you now. But when she had them, I would find out about doctor's appointments two months after they didn't have them when they got to go back for a, a checkup to revisit something like, when the fuck this happened? Oh, two right. months ago. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you now. Bitch, he had the issue two <laughs> months ago. They running tests now to see if it's still an issue. I'm, you, you know what I'm saying? It, women yep. just, and I, I just, I just, and when you go to court, I just honestly believe, and you say, you know, the courts have um, the children's best interests, at, best interests at hand. When you say, or not just you, but when that's being said, that's all the, the best interest is mommy. I, as soon as you go, and that's why men feel defeated. Most men, I don't know how rich white men feel, you know. Right, right. But most men feel defeated. I know, I've been in court so many times, man, and that one time, even the first time, I never felt good about it because as soon as I walked in there, I got people staring at me. You know, I don't even know what you their job to is. You have that court case in Florida. You would have felt really good about yourself. You ain't lying. I, did, I didn't know. I listened to all these rappers in Florida. I listened to Rick Ross and Trick Daddy. I didn't think I had a chance. You know, oh, it's just it's just real, real fucked up up here in Maryland, man. I'm just I'm about to cry. I'm about to, got me in tears and shit. This shit is awful, man, up here. It is. Do you real- know what it is, RL? And and this is the thing. I I think that this is when people are just immature, men and women. Right. Because I see it on both sides. They are immature in and, the and way selfish. they de- and they're selfish mm-hmm. in the way they decide to conduct their business. Right. These children, a child, they're the innocent people parties within this. And people get separated and they get divorced and I would say what 95% of the time they're using this child or children as a pawn yep. to hurt the other person. So this child has now become 
either a cannonball, a bullet, a missile, like the, the, the child is now ammunition to hurt the other person. Yep. And that to me is when your selfishness has just taken over your life. Right. And it is not about, it's not about me and what I feel with regards to my ex. It's about what my child feels about her dad. Yeah. And there are a lot of, I could sit here and we can talk until the cows come home, yes, until, yep, yep, until yep. we get our COVID shot, all this stuff. I could talk about him all night long and, and totally discredit <laughs> every reason why, you know, he sucks. But the right. bottom line is he does not suck to her. Exactly. And, and that's what that's they don't the realize. Because when she's going, she's happy. She's excited. Not because she's so happy to get away from me, but she's happy. She's happy. She wants to go hang out with her dad and see her dad. And I, how can I be mad? And, because my child is happy? Right. Then that's yeah. something that's wrong with me. Yeah. That, that, you know? that's, that's, that's how it is. Sometimes though, that's just it's unfortunate, you know. But sometimes it takes you know, a minute to understand that. That just just what you said, you know, um, about um, just what you said when when, when you said that uh, sometimes the, the, you know you 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 want to know why why do you want to go there? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I'm, she's she, he or she's such an asshole. Why do you want to go to them? <laughs> They're asshole to you, but not to the kid. They're always going to be mom or did her always going to be dad and when i went through my situation i admit i had i i i that was one of the questions i had the fuck is wrong with you don't you know what she does and, and it, it's one of those things where i learned it and once i learned it i was i was kind of comfortable with it but it was at that point i was like i wish she would understand it the way i just understood it you understand what i'm saying and yeah. Unfortunately, she does now, but it, it took, to me, it took too long. There was a lot of time wasted, a lot of stupid how, how stuff that went on. Uh, honestly, Regan, it's like better late than never. Exactly. Because, and, and, and I'm grateful now. Yeah. Better late than never. Right. Because, you know, you still have a lot of life left. Like, right, right. In, in your situation, you have, you know, two kids and right, right, those right. kids are eventually going to have kids and and yeah. you will sh still share things with that person and i for me i think about those types of situations so i don't think about today and for tomorrow exactly. you know i think about i want her to be happy now in two years from now if if she decides oh i want to go live with dad there are some things that will have to be sorted out if that's the case Right, and right. I know for a fact, not because I want to control the situation, RL has nothing to do with that, but there are just a lot of things that we as parents want for her. And a big thing for us is for her to be stable mm -hmm, in a stable mm -hmm, home and a mm -hmm. stable environment. And her dad knows that because of the hours that he works and the, the amount of time he puts into work, and all of that, it's just not, you know, it, it, he, he's not able to give that to her. Right. And he gets that. Now, if he feels as if he's in a place where he can do that, um, by all means, I would be happy for her to be there with him more. Right. Because I feel that he's not going to ever be her mom. Right, right. I'm sorry. He doesn't have a vagina. He's not going to be her mom. I'm not going to be her dad. I'm not dad. I'm not a father in any way. I will be the mother. And so, yeah, she needs the dad. I'm close to my dad. So every girl needs her dad, and that's important. So I would be happy. But I know for a fact that we both give her different things. We both give her life. We, we, we contribute different things to her life. Mm -hmm. And there are just things that I know she will always turn to me for. And then there are certain things that they have together that I could, that I don't even want to be affiliated with. Right. I'm, I'm happy 
that she has that with him. Because I don't want to be involved in it. But, you know, I, I do feel as if it is, a it, it's a lot of people having babies and just not being mature to deal with the consequences and the repercussions if for some reason things don't work out between that, you know, with that other person. Right. You're damn right. I'm, I'm one of them because I, I called my cousins up. I wanted them to go beat her up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew where it was headed. I, man, I might, might as well surprise her. Go beat her up. Oh, they that singing Hustle and Flow. Whoop that yeah. trick. Get him. Whoop that trick. Get him. Whoop that trick. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know. Nah, but you, you know what? I, I I remember when we when when the relationship ended, I for a while I just was like, okay, this ain't bad. And I'm gonna right. tell you where shit went wrong. I'm gonna tell you when the I seen shit go left. Our sons had long hair. They had long hair. Right. I picked them up. I picked them up from school. And they had haircuts. Oh. And I was like, I went to the house and I said, hey, why you cut their hair? She was like, what do you mean? I was like, you didn't even consult with me. And she said, I didn't know I had to consult with you. I said, are you serious? I said, they had long, beautiful hair and you cut their hair. Why? And I knew what the answer was going to be. And she stalled and she's like, well, I'm the one doing it. I said, you didn't have to do it. I know people that will do it for me, for them. And that's what she, I don't want nobody doing my son's hair. I, there we go. There it is. There it is. The control <laughs> factor. You know, right, call, right. call my cousin up. Where Tanisa at? Yeah. Be the ass. <laughs> and that's when, that's when I knew shit was going to go left. And, and that's, you know, it just went left. And like I said, just for me, it was just, I never felt like for me being the man that I am, the father that I am, I could be a horrible man to you. I don't really give a shit. I could cheat on you a hundred fucking times. As long as I'm a damn good father, then let me be a father. Right. Don't restrict me from seeing my kids <laughs> because you was one of many. You know what I mean? If, let's be honest. If you was really good at your job, I wouldn't have cheated on you. <laughs> you know, <Let's> just be honest. <laughs> Listen, child. Th this whole thing about if you <laughs> if you weren't good at your job, then I no. <laughs> uh, please stop. Y'all are hoes. Oh, here we go. All are there running the streets, and you guys know it does not matter. You will cheat anyways. It is what it is. There are just some people like that, and men and women alike. There are some women will cheat, and it doesn't matter what you do. That's just how they are. Some men are like that. It doesn't matter what they have at home. They can have prime rib at home. They will still go out and eat punk. Yeah, we want we want that yard foul. And, <laughs> and, and, and eat what? Conk. Conk. I thought you said. I thought you said cock. I was <laughs> like, what? <the laughs> What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, but, but you know, no. it's like I think that's that's what it is. So getting back to even like, you know, co-parenting and quarantining and stuff like that, it really has to come down to being mature and having these tough conversations. Yeah. Mm. As People need to step back and stop looking at themselves as, you know, oh, that's my ex. Oh, I can't stand that hoe. My baby oh, Paul. Yes. Oh. Start looking at yourself as yep. a parent. My baby Paul. I father. am the mother. I'm the father. Start looking at yourself as the parent and start figuring it out. Figuring out what do I want, what's best for my child? And, what and, and, will be best for my kid? Right. Sometimes you got to suck up your emotions, man, and suck up how you feel and just let the kid yeah. go. Just let him be great. <laughs> because in yeah. all honesty, RL, oh, oh, let's oh. just say I had the type of hours and the job that my ex was doing. Because he has a job where he's interacting with people 
all the time. So he is at high risk out there in Florida with so many people. If I was in that position and I was that person and he was at home with her working from home like I am, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be around her all the time as a mom because that's the best thing for her. Do I want to be the person responsible for getting my child sick? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, so, that's, you that know, is, it's that's like that's thing. where as parents, yes, you miss them. You miss your family. You want to be with them. Like It's like we FaceTime family. It's just her and I here, and we're always FaceTiming, and it's like, we miss that interaction. She misses her cousins. Yep. It's like we're seeing them. They're getting so much bigger. Everyone's growing. And it's like you miss that interaction and that togetherness. But we have to do what's safe for each other, for everyone right. involved, you know? And, and people and, need and, to and stop and being first so priority is the kid. First priority is the child. That's, it should always be the kids. That's, and that's, that's the, the first problem. priority. That's your legacy. DJ, DJ PRS1, what what do we say about them kids? Man, fuck them kids. <laughs> fuck them kids. <laughs> but not, not on this show, though. <laughs> <laughs> send, their, send their asses out there in the COVID. They got a better chance in the survival. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's tough. And I'm, I'm this glad, the, you know, this, this, you spoke this, on your situation. It's, it's, this the, look, this is the, this, this the, um, the, 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 the new... When we're introducing a new line, it's going to be, um, man, fuck them exes. Fuck them exes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't talk back. I mean, you know, the ones, like the serious relationships, I can honestly say I did right by. But I, right. I, it fell apart because I think karma got me. Because I was just, man, I, you know, I had like five and six girlfriends. I'm lying to them and shit. So I believe Florida I rappers, probably, man. That Because you was listening yeah. to them Florida rappers. I was listening to Trick Daddy, man. I was, you know, I was into that shit. And when I finally got into a relationship and I thought it was good, Karma said, Mm-mm, I got your yellow ass right here. I got this. You gonna fall apart. <laughs> and when the shit fell apart, man, the shit just went, went barkers. But, you know, I ain't going to say fuck them. I, I did a lot of people wrong, but I never did my, like, in a relationship, you know, well, hold on, I don't want to lie. <laughs> so, I was better than most people. I will say that in a relationship. I was better than most people in a relationship. <laughs> so you're trying to run Florida game in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. I was trying, I was trying my best, man. Trick daddy. I was trying to run a little bit of Southern. I, man, I was trying my best. All right. Shit ain't work. Shit ain't work, man. Child support had me uh 18 gigs. Shout out to my Trinidad crew. They on here watching Suzanne Ram dancing. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they just said. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh man! So, I don't know. I just I, it, it's one of those things where I guess parents need to the, the whole focus is, and I wish I wish you know somebody had educated me back then as well. Well, I think they did. I just didn't listen. But um, it's you got it. The, the kids always come first. Don't ever say, uh, don't ever speak ill about your ex, even though you all, they could be what they want to be. Don't ever speak ill about your ex toward the kid. Um, you know, well, hold on, like hold on. Let's interject. Do not speak ill about your ex to the kid right, or to around your kid. the kid. Right. You can talk about that person all you want. Like you right. need them. <laughs> right, right. But, 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 I mean, to the kid, to the kid or around the yeah. kid, because um, you're going to be disappointed. And, and when I say disappointed, because you're going to be, I told you what an asshole she, he or she was. Why in the hell are you still want to go over there? Because it's my mother. Mm-hmm. It's my father. You understand what I'm yep. saying? Kids, yep. kids love unconditionally. It's one of those things where it's mom or dad. I don't care. So the, that's beautiful, man. That is right. The, so what you got to do sometimes? You just got to let them go and see for themselves and be there for them. Not that I told you so. Is be there for them when they come back and say, "Hey." Why is she like this? Or why is he like that? Well, thing that's when you guys sit and explain stuff. You know, it, it, it's right. one of those things where, I, and yeah, I, I've, I've had my moments where I was like, oh my God, you don't know what she's like. And, and, and it's one of them things where you got this close to telling them and you got to hold back. I had, I had, you know, at least my, my parents and, and her parents and everybody else in there, don't 
you can't you can't speak ill you can't speak ill and i've even had i've even had my kids come to me and say well, well why does mom say such and such about you she said what <laughs> you know what I'm saying? but you're not really like that but you're not really like that i'm like hey you know she had she's about, she has her own opinion when she's upset she say things you know that's the kind of thing you got to say you know but um that's, it's one of those that, things that shit is- Hey, when when they when nobody they ever teaches thing, you how to be a a a a, 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 a what you call it a, um, a divorced parent, you don't never learn shit like that. So it's always nah, brand man. new. It's always like, oh shit, what the hell am I going to do here? Sometimes question, it seems like the end of the world. I got a question for you. Uh huh. Where were you when your kids told you that mom talked was talking about you? I was here in Maryland. No, no, no. What were you doing? Are you it was over the phone? No, no, they were actually here visiting. Oh, okay. Look, let me show. Look, my <laughs> so when my son, when my sons told me, I know exactly where I was at. When my sons told me that their mother said, "Your father ain't no good. He in these streets. He gonna go to jail." Right. I was fucking drive. I was driving around Montebello Lake. I almost went through a fucking red light, man. I I, I turned my head and looked at him, and was still going forward. I had to slam on the. I'll never forget what? this shit. <laughs> Don't forget this shit. I, I was like, of all the people right. that she said is going to jail, she's been to jail three times, man. I have never <laughs> been to fucking jail, man. Exactly. I just it, blew, it 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 just blew my fucking mind that she was right, right, right. driving. I, I almost fucking went through a real light, man. I was like, what? I was <laughs> me of all people. I've never been to jail. She's been three fucking times, man. It blew my mind. <laughs> I almost fucking killed this man. See, that's the problem. <sighs> when you're like wishing now that your ex go to jail or goes to jail or that, you know, you're doing the countdown at the end of the day, who has to now live with that? It's the kid. It's the kid yeah. is the one that's like I, going about. I know. Oh, my mama, she been to jail. Oh, my daddy, he might be going to jail. It, that, that's those are like hard, hard, hard burdens to put yeah. on a kid. And, yeah, and to be quite gonna die honest from with you, and I don't want to come across at all like any type of Miss Goody Two Shoes whatsoever. I have to say, I honestly have to say, one having a child later on in my life uh, brought about some bit of maturity Dirty right? Two, and also <laughs> being an educator for such a long time and sitting into parent conferences where you see such dysfunction at its finest. Yep. And, it's and learn, like learning from yourself, your brother's mistakes. But as an educator, <laughs> you're, you're the person dealing then with that child, right? That child after these wacko parents have left the room you're now left with this child every day and your heart breaks. And, and as a mother or as a father, I would think to myself, man, I don't, I don't want to ever be that parent to put my child through that for my child to have to go to school on any given day to feel like that. And so on the weekends, when, when my daughter has to go to her dad, as much as I know I'm going to miss her and, and and I'm gonna wanna like hang out, hang out with her and do stuff with her because we're together all the time. I'm like literally packing her up, shoving her out the door. We gotta go. Let's go. What are you guys gonna do? Because I want her to be excited. I want her to like get there. I'm like, did you call your dad? You're on your way. You're two mm-hmm. minutes away. Let him know. Can't go fast enough because right. she needs that time. And she needs that time to realize that he can be a complete moron. Oh, look. <laughs> but she's going to realize that on her own. Not from, oh, mom said. Exactly. She's come out and be like, damn. Exactly. What the frig? Because I've, 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 trust and believe, I've had those conversations. Now that, that you know, my, <laughs> my, my kids are older now, I've gotten this, this phone call at 2 a.m. in the morning when I'm at work. And hey, hey, so this is what she did. And I, I'm like, it's your mother. Remember, you love your mother. <laughs> you chose to be there. <laughs> you know, yeah. stuff like that. Um, I, you know, I, and I'm like, hey, I, it, it's, I'm still, still, I'm, I'm that close to going, I told you so. 
but I, I don't want to say that. But it's one of those things where it, it, it you yeah. understand her and blah blah blah. Right? I just let them vent, let them vent, let them get it off their chest. Um, give them solutions, many solutions. But I'm not. Nope, I'm not getting involved with that. You know. I, even, I, I guess I'm the petty one. I I've, been, look, I've been close to being you petty. You are right, RL. You are petty. Damn. I, I'm a petty one because, you know, for me, right, you know, like I said, I, going through the courts and, uh, I mean, we was, I was going back and forth to court for almost uh, over a span of three years dealing with her. And um, right. so I, I just, I told my son, as they got older, I didn't say anything when they were younger because it defeats the purpose. They don't really understand. They're not, they're not in the girls. Right. But as they got older, they're 15 and 16 now. So the last couple of years, they, you know, into girls and stuff like that. And that's when, you know, a, a father should talk to their sons about how life is when they come to relationships. And I let them, and, and they've heard their mother say some outlandish shit on the phone to me. They've seen her do some outlandish shit like in person. And I, and I just, and I said, you know, let it be a life lesson for you that if a woman like your mother can do that, then what do you think a woman that you don't know that you start dating and have a life will do to you if she ain't the one that's destined to be with you? Keep in mind, you know, relationships, man, it's, it's a toss up. It's a fucking it's a toss up when you go when you meet new people. So if your mother can do these despicable things, <laughs> I guess what? there's there's a woman out there that ain't your mother. And if, she, if your mother can do despicable shit, that motherfucker could be Harley Quinn. You trying to date. <laughs> I, so I, I i use it as lessons but at the yep. same time at the same time i tell my sons you know you should learn from me you know what I'm saying learn from my fuck-ups you know the best the, the best tool the best lesson i can give you in life is everybody see the good shit they oh yeah. daddy get paid oh you know daddy they paying bills and they bought cars and they buying us this that's the good shit that's the good shit take a look at the fuck ups I made in life, where you think I could have done better, you know, where you don't want to fuck up. So take a look at it. That's, and I'm I'm blunt with my sons like that. I'm like, yo, I no, don't be stupid. You see, I fucked up. Don't fuck fuck up because it's like, damn, you didn't learn shit. You watched me fuck up and was like, oh, I ain't gonna do it, and then you went and did it. <laughs> you know, learn from me. Learn from You're my. Supposed to learn from my mistakes. <clears throat> yeah, learn learn from them. You know what I mean? I I because. I didn't. I didn't know you. You and hey, y'all know y'all. We're, we're we're grown, right? You you make you make a mistake and then you turn around and make the same mistake a year later. Be like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> you did it again. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm trying to convince people I ain't stupid, but I'm out here fucking up again the the same shit. But I'm telling people, no, 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 no. I, I'm I got it under control. I got yeah. it under control. Don't go into the light. I can't help it. All right, you know. I <laughs> You know you should be wearing a condom, but fuck it, it feels good. Damn, I got the wrong bitch pregnant again. Right. You know what I'm saying? She want more money. You know, it's like, so, and I, I just preach that, man. I, I just preach that. Learn, learn. Don't worry about the good stuff. Right. Every, every, for the most part, everybody go to work and everybody provides some kind of living arrangement in their life, an apartment, a house, whatever. They go out, they eat. That's just, that's, that's, you want to do those things. Right. But, like, and I tell him, I said, take a look at my wife. And I praise my wife for this. I was the first man she ever lived with, right? My wife didn't have any children. We got married. We waited two years into our marriage to make sure we wasn't going to kill each other, or divorce each other <laughs> before we had children. Right. And I, I said, man, my wife, my wife has a master's degree. She's, uh, we got married. She was 32. We didn't have Morgan until she was 34. And I'm like, you, you can't, that's how it's supposed to be. I didn't do it. She did it. Y'all have a role model in our household. Right, right. You know, I ain't saying she's perfect, but you get no closer than that. Role model than her. That's right. Yeah. Right. So, Take a look at that. You, when you look at daddy, you, I, 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 it doesn't hurt me if they look at me as they get over like, damn, dad, you you have fucked up a lot. And Isha was pretty good. You know, like, it, right. it doesn't bother me. And you know what I'm saying? It, it literally let me know that you're learning. You're right. dissecting right. it. You're breaking it down. And uh, you're understanding it the way that it should be understood. You know, so it, it doesn't bother me. My wife is way better than me. 
you know, and and if you in life you're supposed to choose people better than you. Right. Especially if you already have kids. Y'all had kids already. I needed somebody in my life to make me look good. I chose my wife. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Quick shout out to um Earl Harris, Brandon um Bryant. Thanks for watching. Denzel Douglas. Dougie. Um Mom's on here, Miss Guyadine, Holly. Oh, mother! <laughs> Man, I be I be on here cursing my ass off. Y'all burnt me. That's just the a shame. She yep. knows hey, your mouth is just. She dirty. told me my first dirty joke. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Betran on here. She said, "Um, RL is one of those people that would push the big red button that says do not push this button.'" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And leave the oh room. Leave. And look, I would. I would push the button. Leave the room. Run in the room with everybody and be like, "Yo, who the fuck pushed it?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that 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 does them drive-bys. I fart. I fart in the aisle and then go to the other aisle and listen to see who smells. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking immature in this show, man. Where the fuck y'all come from? <laughs> So yeah, we can wrap it up now. I mean, I'm, I'm I want to say thanks to all our, 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 our Facebook um, listener um, viewers <laughs> um, for looking in on us, checking in on us, and, and enjoying what we do. Some of you that you know who you are that you come back weekly, you come every week to see this. Um, you must have no lives because you look at us, you know, <laughs> on Facebook every <laughs> Tuesday. Uh, but we appreciate it. We appreciate, it. and we're going to be here for. You know, those people who don't have lives. They have lives. <laughs> but this is almost like that train wreck that you want to see happen. Exactly. You can't <laughs> look away. You're like, that's right, I that's gotta right. keep looking. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. It is. It's like, watch, it, it's like watching them pus videos when people popping pimples. I don't want to see that shit, but let's see what happens. But, yeah, let's see what happens. I got to see. Oh. I got to see how it comes out. You know, I, I don't want to see that shit. Uh, but I just, I just want to say we're grateful for you guys for watching every week. You keep us afloat. Um, you keep us coming back to do this every Tuesday. I swear, because we all have different things we wanted to do. Well, I also want to say a big shout out to my um, my last child, my last son. He turned 12 today. Shout out to my boy, Gio. I love Woo! you. I love you, my brother. He's the Happy funniest birthday. little guy I know. <laughs> and I don't know where he gets it from, but he's the funniest little guy, sharpest little guy. Gio, I love you. <laughs> he's been he's been texting me and reminding me that tomorrow, tomorrow is his birthday, birthday since yep. Sunday. Yep. And so and sending little text, videos. I text him back meme. and I said, "Your birthday's not tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. It's on Tuesday." He's like, "Oh no, Auntie, you are supposed to read that tomorrow." <laughs> 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 and don't send it. Ready? Nice. And mind you, the little pic. It's crazy because the picture is with him, like. <laughs> that's the picture he sends on the thing it's like it's my birthday and then this morning he changed his profile picture to today is my birthday same picture again but <laughs> are you mad oh at my god, god. The little guy's the crazy. Yeah. happy birthday everybody yep 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 um so i don't know what, what, what you guys got planned i just want to say congratulations to dr guiding my sister um for becoming the fourth member of yes, report. Yes, yes. You know, welcome her as a host. She got an official mug. You know? I, I yeah. got a mug. You know when you get a mug, you've made it. Ah, good job. Good nice job. That's <laughs> right. I was awarded a mug. Yep. Um, now official part of Good Vibes TV. Well, th these um, live shows we're going to do is going to be really... Um, I got to see how we do this shit. <laughs> we'll have to fly to Florida. <laughs> I, 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 hey, look, look, look. I'm all for it. I got, I'm vaccinated. I got both my shots. I, I just don't want you there. pushing no red buttons when you go over there. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, DJ PRS1 doesn't have his COVID-19 shot. Oh, I, by the end of the anywhere. week, I should be good to go. I should be good to go by the end of yeah. the week. We ain't, we ain't coming to Florida by the end of the week. I'm just saying. You know, so. <laughs> I'm trying to sneak my way into getting a shot somehow. Oh, so okay. I'll let you guys know hey, next Maryland is safe. You can come on down to Maryland. We safe down here. I... <laughs> I would be honest with you. I did think about that. I finally met my first um, asymptomatic person, though. That was kind of odd. It was it was odd. It's one of my uh, employees, um, and she tested, and they told her she was asymptomatic. So she's been carrying the virus. <laughs> 
but she's wow. not sick. And she was the first one we met, and it was like one of those, like, oh my god. So she's been out, you know. I guess so she don't doesn't spread it, but she's mm. not sick. That's the good thing. Doesn't have any kinds of symptoms, but the doctor said she was asymptomatic, and she got tested because um, during this little I- last ice storm we had, she broke her leg. Unfortunately, in a couple of places, um, slipped on the ice coming to work. Um, so when she went out for that, that's when they she found out, and it was like, oh my lord, you know. Uh, I'm asymptomatic. I'm out here spreading COVID to everybody and not knowing Ooh, it, you know. Super spreader. <laughs> right. It, but it's it, when you think it's only when I heard about it, I thought about it, I was like, wow, you're asymptomatic. You can be spreading this stuff and not know it. And especially if you don't get tested, because you, there's no reason for you to get tested because you you don't have any symptoms, none of that stuff. So I know hundreds of people that are asymptomatic. Right. It's called students at our school. <laughs> they into, they into, into, in, well, I can't even get it out now, but it, for, for all different types of viruses, not just COVID. <laughs> it's just, it's wow. hilarious to me how on the news, because I, I, I watch, you know, in, national news, international news, and it's constantly on the news. Oh, we're like bringing forth a plan to get kids back to school. And I'm like, get back to school. No kids. Kids are at home, really? <laughs> right. Kids are at home. Oh yeah. They are. Hold on, because in Florida, they sent our asses back to school since September of 2020. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've been back in school, so I'm like, wait, people are like not in school. We're, yeah. We're not, to open uh, schools. Baltimore City is not in school yet. Hell no. No. Florida, Florida the, uh, the only state. Uh, fuck them kids. <laughs> I think in Baltimore, they, they even they even planning on, on, on taking some of these school buildings and say, since we're not using them no more, we're going to build something else over here. Shopping center oh, or something. That's so crazy. <laughs> oh, mom says she's on here. Mom says she got her first shot today. Yay. Uh, Our mother? Mom. Yep. Woo! I was, I was hoping for that. All Good. right. Hang on. She's glitching. Hang on. She's glitching. Something going on. Wait a minute. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, girl, I'm excited Please. for anyone that gets a shot. Well, I'll let you guys know how it goes with me trying to get myself a shot. Please. I won't please. let out my secret just yet. Right, right. So I, I, I'll start to wrap up first. Um, you guys know I said, yeah, we do good vibes TV. Um, but um, I'm also, you know, Trinity Spice FM, still rocking Trinity Spice FM. Trinidad, I know you're bored right now. It is Carnival Tuesday. It should be last lap right about now. Everybody should be last lapping. I know there's nobody on the streets. I saw this one meme. It was two people just chipping down the street in a little costume. Listen, yeah. to Trinidad is just off heartbroken right now. And I just want to say uh, heart to you guys. Huh? You dressed up in costumes. Yeah, oh. they did. They, they, yeah, we could have probably dressed up in costumes and come on the show. We'll do that next time. I'm for that. Yeah, I'm for but, that. But you know, I just want to say, um, if you if you still want to feel the vibe, I got um, Trinity Spice FM. We're here. We're jamming the soca. You can party in your backyard, party in your kitchen, uh, party in your car. Basically, you know, we still got the vibes going. So um, check out, check us out, check out all the new music, um, and keep checking us out on on Good Vibes TV every Tuesday. Um, Alisa, what you got going on? Um, so just basically trying to. Uh, find a and finagle a way to get a COVID-19 shot because it is like, you know, winning the high Imperative. ticket lottery right now. So do, working on that. And then just, um, I'm happy to be a part of the show. I'm happy to, I, I don't even know how I got roped into this. I, I cannot even it was tell savvy. you. It was all savvy. Savvy's fault. But savvy is missed. Number one, mm-hmm. I do miss mm-hmm. her. I, I feel like I have to like turn on the heat ever so often because I, I don't have a backup because, you know, RL comes for me, like from daggers from all sides, like, Oh, let me wait to see what she's going to say today. So, um, but other than that, we are just chilling, counting down for staying spring safe. break, <laughs> staying safe right? Yep. and happy to be here and happy to finally Graduate to a mug. To a mug. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, Ramon, what you got? 
people Man, ask so, you through the steering wheel all this time. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, you can close like it off. I'm shut down. I ain't got nothing going on. Uh, piggyback off of uh, PRS One. Uh, thank you to everybody to tune in. Um, if no one tuned in, uh, we probably still fucking do the show. Fuck that, it. For real, for real, for it, real. It is what it is. But uh, to see the same names over and over again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's special and it's very it's a great feeling. It is because I got family members who say, "Oh, I'm gonna watch it," and them whores ain't watched it yet. And I hope right. they, whenever they watch it, they see this episode, and I'm calling them whores. You know, it's a shame that <laughs> it, it, it's a shame because it, it really is. It's a shame that the people closest to you won't celebrate you until strangers celebrate you, and it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way, but it is. But whatever. So everybody that you tune in, you much love and appreciate it. Happy birthday to Geo. Uh, check us out when you get a chance. Get your shot. I'm gonna take you to go see some butt naked women. Um, <laughs> back back to the vaccination. Uh, I got my second shot. If you haven't got your shot, go get your shot. I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there. Look, stop being stupid. If you have children, you need to protect them, and that's one way of protecting them. And if you have parents, that's another way of protecting your parents. And then you talk about coming together in the community. Well, if we want to come together in the community, then we got to take care of ourselves first before we can help others. It's one thing to send a person a text message and drop a box of food off at their steps, but it would be really great to be back to breaking bread under the same roof with one another. And a simple, a simple shot. It's a simple shot. I know people are scared. They're talking about it's just happened too, too fast. Think about when you're watching movies. When you was watching Contagion with uh, my man in the Matrix, the movie's two hours long. And through the whole first 90 minutes, you're like, oh, my God, are they going to get the medicine? Are they going to get the care? Are they going to get the care? And they finally get the care. And you're like, oh, my God, just in time. We're living in that moment. Right. And we have the opportunity to, to fix somewhat of what's going on. It ain't going to take it away completely. But it's going to help us. And God gave these individuals, these scientists, these doctors, he gave them this gift. He gave them the intelligence. He gave them the tools to take care of the world. Okay, so I know you're scared, but if you want to do the right thing for your children and your family, that's the right thing. And I'm going to get off my soapbox. Thank you for tuning in. The GVTV, Good Vibes Television. Until next week, fuck your kids. Be safe. <laughs> And the Mexes. <laughs> Peace out.